Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm the creator of The Shepherd's Treasure, which is a Christian alternative to Elf on the Shelf. Um, I often share on the Shepherd's Treasure Facebook page kind of things that God have been work has been working on my heart. And today I just thought I'd do something different and do a video. Um, because lately I have learned that there is something in common with faith in Spider-Man. And I thought I'd share. <laughs> So my three-year-old son, Maverick, uh, thinks he's Spider-Man, like he introduces himself as Spider-Man, and then shoots his web at people, perfect strangers, pew, pew. <laughs> and in typical Spider-Man fashion, he jumps around, runs, saving people, you know, getting all the bad guys. So as you can imagine, trying to get Spider-Man to sit for five minutes to practice his ABCs or eat a decent meal. It's kind of like sticking a hamster in a cage and a wheel, one of those little hamster wheels, and then saying, don't move. It just doesn't happen. But last week, Maverick, aka Spider-Man, fell from a loft in my parents' house and he broke his leg. Clean break through his tibia and fibia. And he has to wear this cast for five weeks. So he's too young to use crutches, which means mommy and daddy are getting their workout by carrying him everywhere. And I kind of feel like I have an infant again. <laughs> Only he's 30 pounds and can talk back. The biggest blow is that he can't be his usual independent and tenacious little Spider-Man self. He really is just like clinging to us all the time because we have to meet every single one of his needs. I mean, when he's hurting, he calls us. We take him to the bathroom. We pick him um, and pick up all of his toys. Every time he drops something, we have to bathe him, clothe him. You know, it's it's a bit of a challenge. And it really breaks my heart more than anything that he can't be his usual active self, right? It's tough on a three-year-old. The only bright side, and I mean the only bright side, is that he will st sit still for five minutes and actually practice his ABCs with me um, without jumping around. And he listens. He actually listens. Uh, he's, you know, got no other choice. But I've also noticed that my husband and my son's relationship um, is growing kind of stronger because daddy has really been able to have this intentional um, time with him that isn't interrupted by leaping and fighting bad guys and saving the day. So it's kind of added a different dimension to the relationship almost. So I share all this about my little Spider-Man because it dawned on me how much this reminds me of a trial that our family has recently gone through and how it directly impacted my faith. So I wanted to share. And I wanted to share on a video because I want you to see my face when I share my heart this time. I want more than anything for God to get the glory in all of this. And if at all possible, for him to get the glory in, in not just our lives, but in yours as well. So I can't go into all the details here, but a while ago we were faced with this huge challenge that threatened to unfairly take something that we hold very dear. This struggle lasted a couple months, actually, and then something miraculous happened. God saved us from our trial in a way that only he could. I mean, it was a miracle from his hand. And I've never in my life experienced personally a work of God like this one to this extent. And it reminded me of the stories in the Bible of like Gideon and David and Goliath and Moses and the Egyptians. I mean, not as dramatic, of course, but God did something so miraculous in the most unlikely circumstances with the most unlikely people that there is no denying that it was the hand of God. So there was no choice but to give him all the glory for it. I was so blown away and humbled by what God chose to save us from and how he chose to save us from all of that, that mess. Um, and he deserves absolutely endless praise. But that is not why I'm doing this video. God doesn't always save us from our trials. He doesn't always answer our prayers the way we want them to be answered. He just doesn't. You see, 
as I was in the middle of rejoicing over what God had done for us, how he had saved our family from this trial, the strangest emotion came over me. And I can only compare what I felt to the feelings of homesickness, I guess, that you know wash over you when you've been away from a loved one for a really long time. So during the struggle, let me explain this. During the struggle, I literally had to cling to God for dear life. Like Spider-Man, I guess, with his broken leg, I had no choice but to trust in God in a way that I never had before. I mean, I was struggling with overwhelming feelings of doubt, worry, anger, fear, frustration, grief through all of this. And by the grace of God, I mustered up the strength to take each doubt and each tear and every worry and lay them at the feet of Jesus through his word, his perfect word. God replaced all of my doubts with assurance and trust. And he replaced my tears with joy, my fears with with this hope that only he could give. And he replaced my anger, uh, you know, with this trust and my worry with peace that passes all understanding. So he did all of this before I knew how God was going to miraculously save us from our trial. And you know, just like Maverick and how he could finally pay attention and practice his alphabet with me because of his broken leg, I was able to listen to the heartbeat of Jesus because of my trial. I experienced firsthand how true Psalm 34, 18 is when it says, God is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. My husband, um, you know, I told you that he was able to develop this unique relationship with Maverick. And in the same way, I was able to draw close to Jesus when I was forced to be still to just be still because all of my own strength and my own efforts was never going to be enough to overcome the trial that was in front of us. And when this long trial ended, I was faced with this realization, right? You know, that, I don't know, I guess I didn't need him every second just to survive those overwhelming emotions and circumstances anymore. And through all of this, I had fallen so in love with Jesus in the midst of it and felt so close to him that in some odd way, I was sad it was ending. I was homesick for Jesus. It was the trial itself, not the outcome, that makes me now want to draw near to him every second of every day. It was the trial, not the deliverance, that made me fall in love with God more than I've ever loved him before. And it was the trial that makes me know without a shadow of a doubt that I can consider it pure joy whenever I face trials of many kinds, like it says in James 1-2. So I share all of this, I don't know, to hopefully encourage those of you who are going through something difficult right now, for those of you who are enduring a trial that you just want resolution for, like enough already, let's end this thing. I would encourage you, don't, whatever you do, miss the beauty and the purpose in the pain, in the trial. What you choose to do in your trial could be more life-changing than how the trial is resolved. Recognize that you're not Spider-Man. Sorry. No matter how hard you try to control, intervene, or change your circumstances and your, your own strength, it's never going to result in, in peace, life, hope, joy, and, and that purpose that only God can give you if you surrender to him. I've learned that I've learned that lesson like a million times. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to learn it a thousand more. But each time, it's a little easier for me to go to him first instead of my own strength. You know, you'll probably have to learn that lesson a few times yourself. But 
I would encourage you that you can't really learn to lean on God in a trial or in life if you don't make prayer and, and this a priority. That's my Bible, by the way. Um, Proverbs 35 says, Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Not only is his word flawless, it's alive. Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. But you won't ever know. You won't ever know how flawless and alive this word is if you don't use it. If you don't run to it first when you face emotions or circumstances that threaten to steal your joy and your faith. When you go to God's word, you go to Jesus himself. John 1 says that Jesus is the word of God, right? So the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. When you pray God's word over your emotions and your circumstances, just sit back and watch as Jesus himself pierces through your doubt, destroys your fear, and brings life to your weary soul. No one will ever make me doubt his word again because I have seen it come alive. More than anything, I want that for you. Jesus says in John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. It's amazing what happens when you've tasted the abundant life in Christ. It makes you like want to share it with everyone because you want other people to experience it too. It's because it's, it's incredible. Don't wait until heaven to experience the abundant life that God has put in front of you today. My prayer for you is that you truly seek God not just on the mountains when he does what what you always wanted him to do, when he gives you what you want. My prayer is that you seek him in the valleys too. Only God is capable of turning your valleys into mountains. Because with God's strength, Spider-Man ain't got nothing on you.